Hello everyone, I'm Mohamed Razak and in next couple of minutes I will explain you my recent article that is published in Archives of Biochemistry and Biophysics related to how bone and kidney interact each other to keep normal phosphate balance. So why understanding the regulation of phosphate homeostasis is biologically important? Phosphate is an important component of nucleic acids and cell membranes. Intracellular anions are involved in activation and in activations of enzymes and coenzymes. It also plays a role in cell signaling, energy metabolism and bone mineralization. So maintaining normal phosphate balance is essential for normal cellular functions and its imbalance can lead to bone diseases, vascular diseases like cardiovascular calcification and recent studies suggest that phosphate toxicity can induce premature aging. The traditional view of how phosphate is regulated in our body is when blood level of phosphate is high, PTH induces increase in phosphate excretion, while vitamin D reduces intestinal phosphate absorption to restore the phosphate balance. However, identification of FGF23 as a phosphate lowering factor has helped us to have a deeper understanding of how phosphate is regulated in our body. FGF23 is around particular delta secreted protein. It's mostly produced by the bone cells and it can suppress vitamin D activities. This mutation in human can cause diseases with abnormal phosphate homeostasis. FGF23 protein has a receptor binding site in its N-terminal domain and a clotho interacting site in its C-terminal domain. So what are the factors that can induce synthesis of FGF23? Calcium, phosphate, vitamin D, PTH, all can directly or in an indirect fashion can induce synthesis of FGF23 in the bone. There are also other factors like iron, acidosis, clotho, leptin can also induce synthesis of FGF23. Unlike most of the other members of the FGF family, FGF23 needs clotho as a cofactor to induce downstream signaling through FGF receptors. In other words, FGF receptors are not enough to make FGF23 a bioactive molecule. It needs clotho as an additional factor. So when FGF23, clotho and FGF receptors come together, it becomes a functional unit and let FGF23 exert its phosphate lowering effects. It's important to mention here, dysregulation of FGF23 and clotho can lead to phosphate toxicity. Phosphate toxicity can induce a wide range of pathology that include impaired bone mineralization, increased cell death, impaired cell signaling, impaired fertility, vascular calcification, renal dysfunction, increased tumorogenesis and premature aging. So identification of FGF23 has changed our understanding of how kidney controls phosphate homeostasis. What used to be perceived as PTH and vitamin D mediated process, now we know FGF23 can act on kidneys to induce urinary phosphate excretion by suppressing sodium phosphate co-transporter activities that is not P2A and 2C. FGF23 can also suppress vitamin D activities to reduce intestinal phosphate absorption. Finally, dysregulation of FGF23 due to bone kidney miscommunication could induce phosphate toxicity with harmful consequences to the affected individuals.